again, Mark here from Talking Bass. Well, it's been a couple of weeks since I've released a video here on YouTube, and as you can see, I've been changing things up a bit. Gone is the white backdrop of the last 11 years, and here's something a little different. Now, I've had a few comments asking for something a little less bright, and so, here you go. Things are totally not bright at all. I suppose you might say it's a little dark. Let me know what you think in the comments, and over the next few weeks, I might adjust it a little until I settle on something that I can stick with. So, today, let's have a quick look at a bass line from one of the kings of bass, the legend that is Geddy Lee. This bass riff is from the opening of Turn the Page by Rush from the Hold Your Fire album. It's a cool riff that shows how bass chords can work well for something a little different in a song. A little different like my new backdrop. So, the opening is about 160 beats per minute, it's roughly in the key of B, and it sounds like this. So, the chord we're using here is a power chord root and fifth, but extending to include the root again on the top. So for that first chord, we have B, F sharp, and B. So it's 14th fret on the A string, 16th fret on the D and G string. So if you just try playing that chord first of all, fretting with the first finger for the A string and the third finger barred for the D and G string, then pluck with the thumb, first and second fingers of the right hand. So played as a block chord, like that, and then just try arpeggiating it. Then we also make use of a straight barring across the A, D and G string at the 14th fret with the index finger. So that's B, E and A in terms of the notes. So just straight perfect fourths, which work out as a suspension of that B, like a B7 sus chord. So again, try that chord, just barring with that index finger, with the first finger across the 14th fret there. Might hurt a little bit on the back of your finger there if you've never tried any chords before. And then try moving between them. And that's the two chords. So now we just need to learn the pattern that Geddy uses here. So we begin with the notes on that D and G string, so it's that 16th fret there, so the F sharp and the B on the top. So we don't play the low B to begin with, we just pluck those two uh, notes on the D and the G string using the first and second fingers there, the index and middle. So, then we can pluck twice with the thumb on the A string. Now, the, the first time through, on the original, he actually only plays it once, but on all of the repetitions, it's, you know, it's twice on the bottom. So just play it twice on the bottom, then, <laughs> then you can change it as you go on. So, so, pluck with those two fingers, and then we've got two with the thumb. Then we move down to that barring there on the D and the G string with the index finger again, plucked with the uh, first and second finger, so. Then we pluck again with the thumb, and then we move back up to our original two notes. Okay, so just try that to begin with. And then just build up speed. Then we just have so, again, plucking with the thumb, back up to the chord on the 16th fret, so... Thumb again, there's a thumb between each of those double stops. Then we have the bar there, 14th fret, back up to the 16th fret, so... And then we just pluck with the thumb again on the B to bring us back round, so... So really, if you can learn the rhythm for the double stops on the top... Which a lot of you will probably know if you know this song, just by learning it by ear... Then you can just fill it in with the... those low Bs. Okay? So, learn that pattern very, very slowly, as slow as you need to. And then you can gradually build up speed. But I do have to say that it is it is a little bit easier when you play it faster. You know, once you've got that pattern down, it does work out uh, easier fast because when you're playing it slow, you're trying to remember what that pattern is. But that's good. If you can play it slow, you'll be able to slow, uh, play it fast. 
So once you have that under your fingers and you can play it round and round, you can try playing it as it is on the original, which is to play it four times. <laughs> drop down to A flat. So we're just playing the exact same thing, but here on the A flat there, 11th fret A string and 13th fret on the D and G strings. Okay. So that riff's played four times before entering the main verse, which moves into regular fingerstyle playing. But just as a little aside, the progression here of moving down a minor third, down to that A flat, continues through the verse. The chords move from B to A flat, to F down to D. Very odd movement, which almost mimics the kind of equal octave division of, uh, of John Coltrane that you might see in Giant Steps or Countdown in, uh, in jazz. But uh, we're using minor thirds instead of major thirds. I might record a lesson on the bass line of the verse in an upcoming video, so let me know if that's something that you'd like to see. Okay, so that's turn the page. Let me know if that helped in the comments, and let me know if you like the new backdrop. Also, subscribe to the channel for weekly lessons. Give me a like, and remember there are over 750 free lessons all there at the Talking Bass website, organized and systemized for ease of navigation in the lesson map. You can also sign up for the free membership, where you'll find a ton of free practice resources and downloads, a thriving community, all helping each other in the forums and chat groups, and you can also try out the premium courses if you want to take things a little bit more seriously with step-by-step -step lessons on every topic imaginable. Okay, I'll see you next week.